Hi, my name is Daniel and in this video I will show you how to use the algorithm Bowtie 2 to align short reach sequencing data on a computer cluster using the terminal. So let's open a terminal here. We can print the working directory and list its contents. And there are three directories here. And I want to make a new directory called Bowtie 2 where the output files will be stored. Uh, we can see that it was created here. We can go now to the FASTQ folder and there is a single FASTQ file that contains short read sequencing data obtained from an experiment done on the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster and they did chromatin immune precipitation followed by sequencing on a particular histone mark. We can use BOTI2 to align these short reads to the Drosophila melanogaster reference assembly genome. We can go up a one directory and go to the sbatch folder. And there's a single uh, text file there. We can open it through Vim. We can use a tab to autocomplete. Here in yellow, they are the uh, appropriate sbatch uh, options that we are specifying to be used on this specific run on this sbatch on the cluster. Here we have the job name, botai 2 and we are telling it to send all types of email from this run to my own email address. And here you will have to put your own. Here then we want to use one node and 16 processors to run Bowtie 2 fast. In deciding how many processors to use, you have to gauge how long you want to wait on the queue to uh, such as that the higher the number of processors that you ask, uh, you will most likely have to wait uh, longer in the queue, such as that the system can provide you the requested processors. And I'm giving it 20 gigabytes of memory, so there should be plenty to run this alignment uh, Bowtie 2. And also one hour as the time limit. And I'm requesting that the uh, output and error files be put in this this directory, this location. And I'm using these two variables, uh, percentage %x, which will replace by the uh, the job name or bowtie two, and dot the ID of the of the job. And in this block of text, I am specifying that the context of the job to be stored on the output file in this one here. Uh, it will be stored the job name, the job ID, the server name, along with the time and date in which the job started running, and how many processors or tasks and nodes the job used. And this is all used for documentation. Here I am specifying uh, the variable directory that contains this portion of text that is a path that I will be using throughout this this uh, this file. We go down a little bit and now I am here loading modules that this job will require in order for Bowtie 2 to, to be to be utilized. Along with some tools which is another set of tools, uh, software that will further process the, the, some of the files here. So here, this is where the Bowtie 2 starts, and this is the syntax. I am specifying by the, just specifying Bowtie 2, and then dash dash time, such as that, it will tell us how, how, time, how long it took. And then I'm telling dash dash very sensitive, which are preset conditions, a uh, fast way of putting uh, many preset conditions. And I can show you further going to the Bowtie 2 official webpage. We can look for presets. And here, the, there are many 
preset conditions like uh, here uh, very sensitive here it is it's essentially a replacement of specifying very specific conditions like dash d that r and we can see what all of these things are on this documentation and you can do this on your own like uh, there should be here below um, like here it is d is the way this alignment works is like putting the seed extension and other kind of, kind of variables which uh, we will not go into detail right now we can go back to the terminal so preset conditions very sensitive and again we specify the number of threads or processors to be 16 which should match what you specified earlier as the number of processors and coming back down again we we put dash x and should contain the specific path on the computer cluster that you're using that leads to the the reference genome that you want your risk to align to. In this case, I am using Drosophila data. So this is the Drosophila melanogaster path to the genome files. And then I am putting the input file I using the variable that I created earlier. I'm going to the FASTQ directory and the name of the Drosophila FASTQ file that contains the ChIP-seq data. And then we use dash capital S to put specify the specific output directory in a SAM format. And SAM stands for sequence alignment mapping. And this is just a file that contains the where each of the short reads that came from the FASTQ file, where did they align to to the reference genome? I'm telling you to go to this specific directory, Bowtie 2, that we just created. And again, using the same the, the same name of the FASTQ file, but with a different suffix, so, .sam. And also, I'm telling it to put this Bowtie 2, such as that I know that this alignment was run using Bowtie 2. And additionally, I am telling it to run the standard error going to that same directory. That, that contains also essential information of this alignment. And once it is done, I will convert the SAM to a BAM file. The SAM is a human readable version into a binary version of this alignment, which is not human readable. And it's just a faster way of, that the further algorithm, algorithms need in order to process the data. And in order to use this file, we can use SAM tools and the subcommand view, followed by dash capital S, a lowercase b. It is uh, which are the options here on yellow. And capital S is just saying that the input will be a SAM file, and lowercase b is that the output will be a BAM file. And the way you use it is that afterwards you can just put the directory and the name uh, of the input file. Again, it was the SAM file, the alignment that was created by Bowtie. And as the output dash O, you can just put the directory of the location of the uh, BAM file. And after that, you need to sort the BAM file. And that is such as that the uh, the, it's a more efficient way to the visualization process. Uh, the, the sort initially takes place from literally in a chromosome from left to right. And the, the usage is, uh, is as follows. You can use some tools and the subcommand sort and you give it the input directory or the file. In this case, it's the BAM file that was created by some tools view but now it is the input and the output dash o will be the 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 name or the 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 sorted file with its own location on the same bowtie 2 folder and again it is exactly the same name but i'm just adding the 
the suffix dot sorted here to differentiate it from the unsorted file. And finally, we need to create an index of this sorted.fam, sorry, sorted.bam. And this index is just used by the visualization software in order to rapidly access two different parts of the genome. So essentially, the BAM file, BAM file will be a pretty big file and the index is necessary to, to make things more efficient. And to make produce this index file, we use again SAM tools and the subcommand index and slash b, meaning that the output should be a BAI index. And there are other kinds of indexes here, like the C or M, but those are not uh, necessary right now. And the way to use it is uh, after dash P, you can just put the input or the location of the input of the sorted dot BAM file. And you don't need to put an output file, it will just generate it in the same location using that suffix. And then the the timing which the job ended. So we can just exit the script now and to run it which you can just type sbatch space botai2.sbatch and press enter. We can see that it was submitted and it gave us this particular job ID. We can then now type qstat dash u and your username to see how your job is, is running. Here's our username. And I only have one job running and it's still in the queue, so no elapsed time has, has passed. When it, it exits the queue, it will start running. And you can see this that updated. And um, we can wait a couple of minutes for this to stop running. It's been now uh, some minutes since the job bowtie to stop running, or rather since it finished. So we cannot see what the output, output files were. We can print the working directory and list this directory. And let's go first to the error and output files directory. We list its contents and we can see that there are more there are two files here. We can use more to explore the error one and it just contains this single sentence saying something about the process that the files... It doesn't really matter what's inside of this. We can go to the output one and this one contains the information of how the job ran. It uh, ran from 25 to 43 so it was 18 minutes for the alignment to take place. So that, was, that wasn't that bad. We can go one directory and go to the bowtie to folder that we created and list its contents. Or we can just clean the, the screen first, Control L. We list its contents. We can use the option T here to, to order them temporarily, such as that the one on the on the, the types of the top, uh, the ones on the bottom where they created the uh, the most ancient ones. <laughs> we can see that the SAM file was created first, which is the human readable alignment file. But what we need to visualize this data, this alignment is the, uh, the, the binary version. So it first was 7.3 gigabytes big and it wasn't transformed into a BAM version, which was significantly smaller here. And then it was sorted, and then finally an index.bai file was created, which was much more smaller, which is necessary for this visualization of the sorted BAM file. And before visualizing the data, let's look at this standard error file using more, which contains useful information. Uh, we can see that from the 39 million reads, uh, 
around 6.6% of them could not be aligned at all, whereas 75% of them were aligned exactly once, and 16.8% were aligned more than once, or there was a degree of ambiguity of uh, where do those rates belong to on the reference genome. And so over, overall, we had like a 93% uh, average alignment rate, was, which was pretty good. So we can go exit, clear the screen, and I already transferred the, the BAM, sorted BAM files and the index to my own computer. So let's open a new terminal to, to open them. Um, and as you can see, this is using my own computer. It's not connected to the cluster. And I'm going to use the integrative genome, genomic browser to, to open this sort of BAM files. We can use the bash and the name of the IGV. And we just press enter to enter IGV. And it will uh, take a couple of seconds to, to load. Loading genome. We can make the, the IGB a little bit bigger. And by default, it opens the human assembly first, but that's not exactly what we need. We will have to change to Drosophila melanogaster because that's what our sequence reads are from. We can click it more. And there's a list here of uh, many reference genomes that we can choose from. We, and they are ordered alphabetically. We can just choose the DM6, the latest Drosophila melanogaster genome assembly. We just press OK. And we can see there, there are six uh, chromosomes here. And we can load the file. We can, use, we can see the two files that I transferred to my computer. And you, we just select the BAM file. And it will automatically recognize uh, the index file alongside it. We can open the sort of BAM file, and you can see that it's assumed to see coverage, and that's because the, the, the file is very dense. You cannot see this being this zoom out. We can literally see the entire genome here, so we need to zoom in to see anything. And we can just uh, change the height of this track to, to such as the visualization is, is, is prettier, and change the color, uh, the color gray, because I like that color. And um, let's see here. Mm, we can just leave this as it is. Uh, and uh, we can just here search for a particular genomic location. You can press the coordinates or, or a particular gene name, like this gene, VHL. And it zooms in to the genomic locus of that feature of the genome. And we hear chromosome 2R, which we know is Drosophila because it has weird chromosome names. And these two tracks are div divided by this gray area. On the upper portion is this cumulative or histogram of the reads that are shown on the bottom. Blue are aligned on the one of the strands and on red on the opposite strand. And here you can see a nice peak that corresponds to here to the BHL gene, as you can see on the track blue on the bottom, as the determined by this alignment using Bowtie 2. So that's how you run Bowtie 2 using the terminal uh, and the computer cluster. And some of the sand tools too, and how you can load them into IGV. So I hope you found this video useful.